my understanding of the the issue of identifiability is that it, we should focus on individual identifiability rather than group identifiability. And in the uh, if you were to find out that a specific local area was voting a specific way, that should not be seen as a disadvantage, but rather an advantage of the system to understand or to understand the electorate better. And we are on the verge of being able to understand the electorate much better because we have access to individual records of individual ballots, and there are multiple questions on each ballot. So it'd be possible to correlate a question about a taxation issue with the, uh, the contents of the ballot with respect to a candidate choice, for example. So you would, and those candidates might be very interested to know which of the voters voting for them, or how many of them, what percentage of them were voting for a specific issue, for a, a taxation issue, for example, or against a taxation issue. So that's information which I think should be provided. The, and of course, there's always the, even for the individual, if all the individuals in a area for which there is a report actually vote the same way, then of course you know how all of them have voted. But then, because there are many people voting that way, it's not that interesting to know that they, each one of them voted for a specific candidate but, uh, or an issue. So my understanding is that that's not a serious issue unless it gets down to the individual, in which case the individual may be afraid to vote. I mean, you could perhaps imagine if the, if the result of the knowing of who, uh, what the result of the election was, was uh, of enough impact, it's conceivable that, and I have heard, I even heard over here in Europe about potential instances where one whole region might be disadvantaged because they didn't vote for the uh, particular candidate or so. And that is not something that we in the United States have been talking about as a big worry. Uh, it is, it's not that it's impossible that one might want to worry about that, but there are many other uh, potential invasions of privacy that occur that are much more, of much greater concern than that. So, and for one, I, I am trying to achieve a situation where each ballot can be shown to the public during the audit and online as in the form of an image, and then each pattern on each ballot also shown to the public. So that inevitably means that there will be some cases where a group of people uh, who voted similarly will be shown. In fact, the election results, just the election results alone will show that, that uh, uh, common, uh, commonality of voting. But I think that's more of an advantage to learn that information. It can be seen as an advantage as well as a possible disadvantage. So ideally, the disadvantage would be dealt with another way, not by hiding the information, but dealing with the, the way the government responds to the information. There is a chance that the election records on each ballot might be identifiable to a voter. And if it were true, systematically, then that would be a problem for providing that information to the public. So that also becomes a kind of big data issue, whether there is a chance that uh, uh, computer algorithms could be used to figure out which ballots belong to which voters. And that's, that's a bad thing. You would not want that to happen. And the machine printing of the ballots tends to remove the uh, uh, evidence of individuality on the ballot. So that actually makes one argument for the machine printing. Um, and so we need to address the, uh, the downside, you could say, the danger that someone would identify themselves on the ballot by through a Coca-Cola stain or a deliberate tiny mark somewhere in the text that shows up in the image. And then there are other more uh, bizarre ways that one might lose one's anonymity, that the, the goal is anonymity of the ballot uh, during the tabulation and identifiability of the voter during the eligibility check. 
but the uh, I'm believing that voters should actually not be stopped, not be technically prevented from identifying themselves on the ballot by some idiosyncratic method that only they would recognize. Whereas if they write their name on the ballot, that is a problem and the system needs to check for that. There are also other uh, systematic ways one might identify a voter with a ballot. For example, you could check for DNA on the ballot. You could check for uh, fingerprints. You could check for the, uh, typically these ballots have a, an edge, a stub that's removed, which actually has a number on it, which is identifiable to the voter, but it's deliberately removed in order to achieve anonymity. But the, the paper, the, the pattern of the paper tear could actually be matched up if you had a good scan of the edge of the paper and the edge of the ballot or the stub. So there are these esoteric ways of reattaching the identity of the voter back to the ballot, but they shouldn't be used as reasons not to, uh, uh, not to even attempt to achieve anonymity and therefore uh, argue that the ballots must all remain confidential. This topic, by the way, is called ballot secrecy, unfortunately. Many state constitutions call for ballot secrecy, and that means a voting method where the voter is not normally associated with the ballot. So, and that was an innovation of about 100 years ago that helped to uh, uh, clean up some corruption in elections that occurred because the people who are voting could actually be threatened by someone who is standing nearby watching how they vote and so forth. The uh, but secret ballot or ballot secrecy does not mean hiding the evidence from the public. It means making sure that the uh, evidence is not identifiable to the voter.